So, can AI offer accurate diagnostics for C5 Corvette common issues across the entire platform? Let's find out. Well, welcome back to the channel, boys and girls. Today's something uh, a little different, a little unconventional. We're gonna dive into the world of AI and see if it's a good tool for diagnostics. I really have no idea. Now, I know that AI can be good in some regards or some capacity, but as far as diagnosing some of the weird, quirky stuff on the C5, you kind of learn through tribal knowledge. I don't know. Let's see how smart it is. In any case, I'm gonna ask five of the most common, bizarre issues you're gonna uh, encounter owning a C5 and see if we get the right diagnostic. And I know the answer to all of these, so I will know right away. In any case, man, what a time to be alive. I started working on cars around 2001. I was 16-ish, give or take. And yes, the internet was a thing back then for you, you young folk. A lot more crude than it was today. And YouTube was still four or five years away in the future. Now, I will say in 2025, YouTube is probably one of the best things that ever happened to DIYers. And I remember before YouTube having to uh, comb through sketchy forms to get somewhat the right direction and any uh, car-related teardown illustration guidance, I had to use the Haynes Manual. Remember Haynes Manuals? Do they still make those? I don't know. I worked at a place called Track Auto. It's my second job, junior, senior year of high school, which later got bought out by Advanced Auto. In any case, it was a good tool working there. I got my feet wet working on cars, how a lot of components work, and they had a full catalog or library of Haynes Manuals. Whenever I was bored, I would just read one, any kind of car. It does a complete teardown, breakdown, and some basic maintenance tips on how to do stuff. But that taught me a lot of stuff from basic, you know, brake pad uh, procedures, doing basic tune-ups, etc. That helped a lot. And it's crazy to think in 2005 when YouTube first launched, remember there was no ads. It was kind of the Wild West. There's no clickbait content. It was just people goofing off, living in the moment, just uploading other wacky content. Crazy. And about 10 years later, about 2010, people realized uh, YouTube is a good uh, good vessel for DIY and how-to videos. And investors quickly realized, hey, YouTube's a great way to monetize to make money. And then that slowly turned into people getting rewarded for making better content. And that kind of evolved to where we are today. We have nice polished videos. As long as you stay in the DIY, not the dumb political shit. But YouTube is a great tool. And there is, you know, a monetary value to be gained if you make a quality video, and that helps a lot. But yeah, now we have, uh, with a carrot, people always trying to make great content, especially DIY and how-to, and myself included. Um, but we have this huge catalog of how-to stuff for almost anything you can think of, from from uh, house projects to installing random stuff on your house to fixing appliances, random uh, electrical stuff, anything automotive you can think of. There is a review on it or a how-to and how to fix it. Yeah, and I love making those kind of videos and I love having my catalog out there for anybody to use whenever they want. It's pretty freaking neat. In any case, are we on the verge of the next evolutional step of a virtual help with AI? I really have no idea. We're gonna find out together. So um, yeah, I, I don't know what we're gonna see, no idea. But like I said, I, I have five very common issues. They all kind of have unconventional fixes to them. So I'm curious to see if AI knows that. So AI at this point, I don't think it's fully conscious, but it um, it's only as good as the data it has to spit back up. It's um, it's learning, I, f I feel like. So in any case, I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen with you guys. I'm, I'm using basic Google AI. So you're wondering, yeah, we're just gonna see. We're gonna see what we find. All right, gang, I've input my first question, which was C5 Corvette pull key, wait 10 seconds. And here's what we got. So, here's what's happening. Um, column lock system malfunction, that, that is one issue. There's a few issues, one's VATS, which is right there. Mm -hmm. Yes, the resistor in the VATS system, which I had to do to do my um, my push button. Oh, funny, this is actually my video right here. Huh? This is from four years ago, wow. Outstanding, check it out, it's a good video. But pretty much everything I touch on that video, I'm pretty sure is right here. The key fix for it is either your VATS bypass, which is a little resistor under keys, it's not working, it's dirty. Um, it needs a new tumbler or um, brand new ignition. Um, the LMC5 is the go-to fix. And uh, yeah, it's one of the very first things. That's followed by the VATS system and the brown wire mod. That's what I was looking for. That's kind of like tribal knowledge. And that is exactly what I had to end up doing after doing the LMC5. 
And the fact that my video is on here, um, that's pretty good. Now, AI is clever to where uh, it's using other resources to help fix a problem, and that's the idea. But yeah, if you Google search this five years ago, you would have just got a couple forums and it would have taken you a bunch of dead ends and just pissed you off. So not too bad, not too bad. Fuel gauge quits working. working on, I wonder if all my videos are going to be referenced. That'd be great. Okay. Now, the, it is a uh, very common issue, which it says right there. And yeah, sulfur buildup is the number one reason for it. And the fix is uh, ah, right there, my video. I love it. This is not Sandy. This wasn't playing, I promise. This is just, wow, that's cool. But yeah, Tecron is a fix. I wonder if it's gonna say that. There it is. So yeah, if you had a fuel issue problem with your C5, you went to AI, how do I fix it? And the very first solution would be Tecron. That's that's gonna fix your problem. And then the second thing is gonna to be top tier fuel, which I'm really stressed on. So I wonder if this, this is pulling it from the video I made. Very interesting. Very, very interesting. And then yeah, my, my go-to is Tecron, which helps 90% of people, and to keep from having to use Tecron, use top tier fuel, such as Shell, Exxon Mobil, Texaco, outstanding. And then I would go to replacing the fuel sending units. I never tried the PCM recalibration. That's actually new to me, so I'm learning something too. And uh, inspect wiring for connection. Now it's a pretty basic connection. It's something like three wires to connect it. It's possible, it's feasible, but if it's working and it dumps about halfway through, that tells me in the sending unit, the, the little, what do you call it? In any case, where it makes a little connection to the sending unit, that tells me when it gets to a certain point, there's buildup and it's not quite reading right. That tells me if the wiring is correct or, or working right, it's, it's got continuity, but um, there's, it just dumps the fuel gauge when it can't get a reading on the, um, on the I, I guess, the, the leads, if you will. All right, so two for two, pretty good, pretty good. All right, let's see, uh, Corvette, uh, manual transmission, hard to shift. All right, this is a very common complaint, yes. Before I read any more, the, the fix for it is replacing your fluid, replacing your master cylinder. Um, I've done the uh, liquid molly, which I love a lot, and adjusting your, um, your shifter housing, if you have an aftermarket, let's see what it says. So low fluid. That could lead to it, sure. You always wanna check your fluid and dirty fluid, yes. These clutch fluid gets dirty fast in these cars, very fast. Clutch master cylinder, correct. Slave cylinder in the margins, um, air in the hydraulic system. I have a really good video on how to purge air out of your uh, clutch system on your C5, which I personally love. Uh, the CAG, skip shift. If you have not already done that, get rid of that. Um, check your bushing linkage. I haven't really seen that to be an issue. Synchronizer, the keys can go bad. Okay, actions, recommended actions. Check the fluid, sure. Bleed the clutch system, yes. Um, inspect shift mechanism. Yeah, the, the aftermarket deals, the tick and MVW are pretty stout. I don't see the bushers going bad or wearing. CAG eliminator, um, but no, I for this, I recommend a master cylinder, MGW or TIC aftermarket uh, shift assembly and getting uh, purging the fluid and getting all the air out. Those three things will help a lot and changing your fluid to a uh, synchro mesh by Pennzoil. I, I can't stress enough how good that fluid is with liquid molly, perfect, perfect. So this one didn't quite hit the mark, but eh, close, not too bad though, not too bad. Next is a comment I have not experienced, but Everyone's always worried about it. Um, C5, Corvette, wobbly, harmonic balancer. I mean, the only real thing you can do is um, replace the damn thing, and it's a pain in the ass, from what I understand. Getting the torque off that nut, oof, on your, on your uh, crankshaft, holy shit. Okay, it causes uh, rubber failure, yeah, that's what causes it, comes out around. Loose bolt. I don't really hear them being loose because they're really hard to get off. Wear and tear over time and a manufacturing defect. Uh, the symptoms, engine vibration. Yeah, all those, yeah, wobbly 
bobbling, balancer, weird engine noises, vibration, engine light? I guess it could, yeah. Yeah, crankshaft seal for it, it, oil leaks, yeah. So those are pretty accurate symptoms, uh, diagnosis. The, the biggest one is just looking at the damn thing. But yeah, the, the real solution for it is just replacing the damn thing. Um, I've never seen anyone try to pan the crankshaft. I guess you could. Now, this will get you in the right direction. Not too bad, not too bad. All right, and lastly, classic. How to fix it, EBCM. So in case you don't know, that's the uh, brake control module, the electronic brake control module. 97 and 2000, uh, they didn't break as much when they broke, that was it, you couldn't fix it. Uh, 01 to 04, they were slightly more prone to act. Yeah, mine acts up when it's really cold outside, but it goes away when it's warmed up, it's really goopy. Um, but no, in the 01 to 04, you can just send them in and have them rebuild and get it right back. And you can, and you can drive the car with, with it not operating correctly, you just don't have. <laughs> Uh, traction control and you could if you don't know what you're doing you get a lot of trouble so yeah and the cause is yes yes faulty solder joints internal relay problems yes yeah. and then the symptoms all the stuff you see in the dashboard like I just said and solutions let's see here scan to you'll get this code correct now I've never heard of the wheel speed sensors or harness being any uh, issue for the actual EBCM failure itself that just might be it. It's AI kind of making its own thing up there. Okay. Let's see if it tells you what years you can and can't do. So companies offer repair services. Yes, correct. But only 0104, which does not say. You can do a DIY repair. Now when mine fails, it will. I do plan on doing that repair for you guys. But yeah, unfortunately it doesn't say, it doesn't tell you which gears you can fix and which ones you can't. You just, it's one of those things you just know if you're a C5 person. Um, and unfortunately they don't make them anymore. You have to, if you want to get refurbished 97 to 2000, you're going to spend a lot. You're going to spend about two grand, which is crazy to me. But yeah, this one was kind of, eh, kind of vague. The first two are spot on though. Pretty damn good. I made a joke video about this a couple years ago. Did it come up? No. Well, in any case, it's, I mean, it's pretty accurate and it's only going to get better, but it's definitely a good jumping off point. And this is just for a C5 Corvette, which is kind of a niche car, but you know, for more, you know, your average car, your, your Toyota Camry Corolla in the last 10 years, you can fix almost anything if you plug in what's going on with it. So it's pretty incredible uh, that we live in this day and age. If, you, if you're tenacious enough and do your own work, you really don't need a mechanic anymore, unless you don't want to do the work then. Mechanics needed, but I wonder if mechanics use this tool kind of like how doctors use WebMD, you know, to diagnose stuff. Like, I'm gonna use AI real quick, so pretty crazy. Anyways, I just wanted to show you guys um, how far AI has come in the car world and how it's kind of meeting reality. It's pretty interesting, pretty freaking interesting. And I like how some of my videos pop up AI pulls from my data or my information. That's pretty neat. I wasn't expecting that. Pretty cool, pretty freaking cool. Cool. All right, guys, that's all I got for today. Um, what's coming up next? I got another house project going on, I always do. Oh, I'm gonna be replacing the, the door gaskets. Not this weather stripping, but the gaskets in the door. People forget, people forget about these, they're 25 years old, and I think it'll sound better when it closes. They're about 100 bucks for a set, kind of expensive for a piece of rubber gasket, and I will be doing that. And then we'll be doing the um, radio bezel, wrapped in leather. New seats, harness bar, exhaust, and I think I'm pretty much done with the C5. Oh, and then we'll, we're gonna spend a whole week fully paint correcting it. I gotta fix some curb rash, retint the windows professionally, and then the C5 is done. Then we're gonna get the other C8. I know I said it's a US6, but now I'm kind of wavering towards a E-Ray. I don't know what to do. It's a good problem to have. I don't know, we'll see. I'm thinking late October, November, pull the trigger on that. So, cool. All right guys, that's all I got for today. I'll see you guys next time. Mark out.